Hi, and welcome to the Learn Kubernetes with Google series. My name is Laura, and I'm a software engineer at Google working on managed multi-cluster in GKE. You may have seen the earlier two videos in the series introducing multi-cluster services and the concepts behind the MCS API, service exports and service imports. In this video, I want to explain about multi-cluster DNS and how it works with the two types of multi-cluster services, cluster set IP and multi-cluster headless. So first off, here's just a regular cluster IP type service, which is accessible by this VIP over on the right, 10.122.09. So in the last video, I talked a lot about IPs here and IPs there, but I think for most people making services in their Kubernetes clusters, they don't usually hard code the IP of the service anywhere. They use DNS to route traffic to any services in their cluster. So DNS is nice because Kubernetes DNS names are based on a pattern that are easy to guess from the service resource itself. So for example, this service, which we've been talking about in these videos previously, the one with this name yellow and the namespace prod, normally it gets this DNS name yellow.prod.svc.cluster.local. So easy to guess, you can easily connect the service to its DNS name or vice versa. You can just drop this DNS wherever you need to put in the address for your service. If you have some application config somewhere, you put this DNS name in, it's easy to write, easy to understand when you're just reading the application config, what service is connecting to, and again, no need to hard code any IPs anywhere. So we want the same thing for multi-cluster. Uh, we don't wanna hunt down the cluster set IP and type that into our application config. It's way easier and more natural to use DNS instead. So a main principle behind the MCS API is to be friendly to how people use Kubernetes today. So on that point, the multi-cluster DNS is, looks very similar to how DNS works in a single cluster. Basically, everything is the same, except it uses this different zone. You can see here at the end, instead of cluster.local, it says cluster set.local. So as you recall from the last video, clusters working together in an MCS setup are referred to as a cluster set altogether. So here it is with a diagram. If we have this yellow service being exported over into our green cluster, any other pod in any of the clusters in this cluster set, so any of these red or blue pods in this green cluster, can connect to the yellow pod backends in the purple cluster with the multi-cluster DNS name yellow.prod.svc.clusterset.local. And if we have endpoints over in the blue cluster that are also being exported with the same service name and namespace, then those are also accessible with the same DNS name, yellow.prod.svc.clusterset.local. So we can get to any of these yellow pods in the purple cluster or any of these yellow pods in the green cluster with that one DNS name. So this is great because just like you're used to with cluster IP services, you don't need to keep track of each individual pod. You have this one multi-cluster DNS name. The only change is that the ending is clusterset.local and it load balances in front of all of these pods as if they're all the same service, even though they're on different clusters. Okay, so that's great for cluster set IP type services, but there's another type of Kubernetes service called headless services. And this change in configuration right here where it says cluster IP none, uh, that's what makes the service definition a headless one instead. So the purpose of a headless service in single cluster Kubernetes is to not load balance in front of all the backend pods, but instead give you a way to address each pod individually. So this is particularly useful if your pods are stateful sets or otherwise are associated with some sort of sticky state. So it's important to know which backend specifically a request is going to. So in this situation, uh, we don't want a VIP coming back from the DNS name. We want all the individual IPs of the backends for the headless service. So to do that, uh, headless services also get a DNS name that looks like this, this yellow.prod.svc.cluster.local. But in the headless case, it returns all these pod IPs back. In this case, these two pod IPs here. So you get multiple IPs, one for each backend behind the headless service. But usually in this type of situation, each pod is configured with its own host name and headless DNS provides a single DNS name for each individual pod based on that host name. So you can use that to address them individually instead. A really common format is the pod name plus an ordinal, which is how a stateful set allocates host names automatically, for example. So this yellow dash zero prod.prod.svc.cluster.local addresses just the one pod whose host name is yellow dash zero 
and this yellow dash one dot prod dot svc dot cluster dot local that addresses just the one pod whose host name is yellow dash one and so on and so forth, right? So in the multi-cluster case, you'll see we do something very similar. There's a twist though. You'll see it more clearly when we get to the diagram on the next slide, but you can see here already that for a multi-cluster headless D DNS, the individual pod DNS for each backend is distinguished by its host name. And this is special for multi-cluster by the cluster ID. So those two pieces of information. And at the end here, just like before, it has cluster set.local instead of cluster.local. So let's look at a diagram while we're, we're looking at, at these DNS names, because I think that makes it a lot more clear. Um, here we have those two different DNS names from the prior slide. Um, they know the pod host name, so either yellow dash zero or yellow dash one. And they also have the cluster ID in here. So that's like purple dash cluster for this purple cluster or blue dash cluster, right, for this blue cluster. So this top one, yellow dash zero dot purple cluster dot SVC dot cluster set dot local, that routes to the yellow zero pod in the purple cluster specifically. And the yellow one dot blue cluster dot prod dot SVC dot cluster set dot local, that routes to the yellow one pod in this blue cluster specifically. So it has these two pieces of information now in DNS, the pod host name and the cluster ID. I'm going to show you one more example that really explains why this, this is important. So let's get a situation where the host names are the same. So in this setup, there's a yellow zero pod in the purple cluster and there's a yellow zero pod in the blue cluster. So this shows that we need to know something more than just the host name in order to route to a specific backend in a multi-cluster setup. We can't construct the, the DNS name on host name alone because that doesn't disambiguate enough between pods and different clusters. So we use two pieces of information, pod host name and the cluster ID, and that's how we compose the pod DNS for multi-cluster headless services. So there you have it. This is multi-cluster DNS. Uh, you can use it for your cluster set IP services so that you don't need to hard code your VIP anywhere. Uh, you can just route to all of the backends with this one DNS name. And you can use it for your multi-cluster headless services uh, by uh, targeting each pod individually with this really nice combination of both host name and cluster ID so you can disambiguate them in the multi-cluster case. That's it for this one. Thank you for joining Learn Kubernetes with Google. Check out the next episode, Multi-Cluster Services API, Multi-Cluster Upgrades.